Hello, and um, welcome to those of you uh, watching on Zoom or on CTN. My name is Rob Similcare. I'm the chairman of the board of the Connecticut Lottery Corporation. Today is August 12th, 2021. This is a meeting of the Connecticut Lottery Board of Directors. Um, before we get into our agenda, let me just say quickly that for anyone who is joining to hear the news of our selection of a sports betting vendor, um, while that will be discussed primarily in executive session in this meeting, uh, we will have a press conference that will commence at two o'clock Eastern time at which that uh, selection will be publicly announced. So you will not learn of that during the next two hours of this board meeting, but you will learn about it at two o'clock Eastern. Um, for anyone interested in getting the information about that, um, that conference, you can reach out to um, Tara Jose in the lottery uh, office, our communications head, and she can get you information about that press conference, but that will be commencing at two o'clock. Um, if all the board members on could mute just so we can keep the audio clear, that would be great until you're speaking. And um, I'll get into uh, the agenda. So first, um, welcome. I want to note a couple of changes to our board membership. Um, first of all, uh, one departure. Uh, we got word yesterday that uh, Patty Maroney uh, is leaving our board. She uh, has been a, a, an employee at OBM. Uh, she resigned yesterday from the board. And so um, we just want to thank her um, for her service on the board. She served since 2018. Um, and on behalf of everyone in Connecticut Lottery, we want to thank Ms. Maroney for her service and wish her well in um, all of her endeavors going forward. Meanwhile, uh, we have two new additions to the board I'd like to introduce today. Uh, first of all, Ajay Gupta of New Canaan uh, was appointed by Governor Lamont. Uh, Ajay is the CEO of uh, the SDG Corporation in Norwalk, which is a web and mobile development, as well as a leading provider of cybersecurity solutions. Um, we want to quickly welcome Ajay. And Ajay, just for other board members, if you could briefly say hello and uh, tell us uh, three quick things about yourself, what you do professionally, a bit more about that, what you're hoping you can contribute to our board, uh, and then also one personal thing that, that members should know about you. Sure. Um, hey, Rob, thanks. Happy to be um, part, of the, uh, part of the board and, and uh, really looking forward to interactions with everybody. Um, so as, as Rob said, um, CEO of SDG Corporation, we're headquartered in South Norwalk and our focus is on information technology. We provide technology solutions around web, mobile, cybersecurity, risk management from a perspective of uh, managing technology risk to various uh, clients within Connecticut, the U.S. and globally. Um, we're, um, uh, we've been doing this for the last couple of decades. In fact, our headquarters has been within this one mile radius for the last 25 plus years in South Norwalk. Um, so really excited to be, be part, of, part of this. And you know, what I hope to be contributing um, since uh, a lot of what the Connecticut Lottery Corporation is going to be doing is technology enabled uh, or built on technology platform. Um, I hope to you know, bring you know, to bear some of my experiences and in, in how to deploy enterprise wide scale solutions, uh, look at uh, areas related to cybersecurity, continuity planning, uh, disaster recovery, okay. that sort of, um, uh, you know, those topics and, and happy to contribute wherever else, you know, that, that, that my experiences might, might help. Um, in terms of um, uh, something personal, um, you know, I, as you can see, I, I am from India. I was born and brought up in India. Uh, I've been in the U.S. for a little over, well, over 30, 30 years. I lived in Connecticut for most of that time. Um, and what's, what's different, I guess, in some ways, I'm the youngest of 10. Um, wow. Uh, fam, you know, siblings. So it's, um, you know, that, that leads to some interesting experiences. Um, and, and I've, I've um, you know, managed to, because of technology, sort of stay in touch with a lot of my former schoolmates in India. In fact, on an annual basis, um, about a dozen of our high school friends, we all get together, play golf. And people come from all over the globe and we, you know, play here or in Europe or other places.
places. Um, so, you know, that's, um, that's a little bit about me on, on, on the personal end. That's amazing. Um, well, thanks. That was great. Um, welcome to the board. And uh, cybersecurity obviously is a huge issue in everything uh, that happens around the state and the country right now. So uh, important to have that voice and uh, welcome you to the board. So thanks very much. Thanks, Rob. Um, and next uh, are, are also uh, also joining the board today for the first time is Stephen Ezis of uh, Weston, Connecticut, uh, also appointed by Governor Lamont. Uh, Steve's had a long and successful career in finance and private equity. He's currently managing director of New Market Capital. Um, Steve, again, welcome. And um, same three things, more, a little bit more about what you do, what you're hoping you can contribute, and then uh, a, a personal tidbit. Sure. Thank you very much. Um, it's great to meet everybody, and I'm really looking forward to, uh, to this opportunity. Um, um, as Rob said, I live in Weston. I actually grew up in Connecticut, uh, pretty much. My parents moved to Westport when I was four. Um, and uh, while I never anticipated, uh, uh, once I went to college in uh, California, that I was coming back, but I did and, um, and have lived and worked in Connecticut for the, uh, for the bulk of my career. My career has all been, uh, as Rob described, in various aspects of finance. Um, uh, managing uh, institutional capital. I spent the bulk of my career working in Greenwich at an investment partnership called Bass Investment Limited Partnership, which is associated with a, with a family in Texas. Um, and I currently uh, manage, uh, or one of the portfolio managers at an asset manager uh, called New Market Capital. Um, part of my background um, uh, spans both and technology and Peg, and, uh, if you can mute your line, Peg Morton, I think I'm getting some feedback. And um, and sports, so uh, at at uh, at a vast limited investment partnership, we bought or invested in any number of technology companies, and I've served on the boards of technology companies both here and in Australia, um, where I uh, spent a lot of time in my career. And uh, you know, since uh, this afternoon, we're announcing our, our move into sports betting. Um, I served on the board of the Texas Rangers uh, baseball club for a number of years. As Rob and I have discussed, we were the first group to have purchased the Rangers in the uh, in the late 80s. And for those of you that are grew up in New England, um, I also served on the board of Friendly Ice Cream Stores for 25 years. And that seems to uh, uh, find a, a, a warm uh, feeling in a lot of people's a lot of people's. Uh, a lot of people's backgrounds. Um, I am the chairman of Weston's Board of Finance. I have been for the last eight years and prior to moving to Weston uh, 15 years ago, I had the same position in Westport. So my civic side is, uh, uh, is serving on the boards of finance, both initially in Westport and subsequently um, in Weston. And from a personal uh, viewpoint, I guess uh, you can look at me and say, well, that guy's an old guy with a, uh, you know, with, with a long career. I have a seven-year-old daughter um, and uh, if there's anything that I've learned, uh, seven-year-olds can keep you very busy. And so uh, last night we celebrated the Tooth Fairy. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm getting back to uh, I'm getting back to my youth. Um, and there we go. I look, look forward to the opportunity to meet people in person. That's fantastic. Thank you. The, the mention of friendlies brought me back to my youth as well. So uh, yeah, I look forward to free banana splits for everyone at the next board meeting. <laughs> Appreciate that. <I'm> <laughs> All right. Awesome. Uh, Ajay, Steve, thank you very much and welcome. Great. So let's dive into the agenda. It's a very busy one. Uh, we have a lot to do, so uh, we'll jump right in. Uh, first of all, uh, minutes approval. If folks have had a chance to look at the meeting minutes. I know obviously not everyone here was a part of that meeting, some new members, but uh, for those of who were a member, uh, who were involved, first I need a, a from executive committee members. Is that right? No, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong agenda. So board meeting minutes from the board meeting that took place on June 10th. Um, can I get a motion to approve those minutes? Andrew Mian, so moved. No, thanks. Second. Second. All right. Any questions, comments about the minutes? If not, all those in favor of approval? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 
All right, so those minutes are approved. Uh, then we have um, another set of minutes. This was from a short meeting of the board that took place on July 8th, 2021, um, that had a special purpose. Um, I think most of you were in that. Uh, for anyone who was in that meeting, who can um, make a motion to approve those minutes, please? So move. Will Blanchett. I see Manny, Mang Manny Langella's Second. hand seconding. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? Uh, Rob, I'll abstain. I wasn't at the. I wasn't able to make that meeting, so I'll abstain. Yes. Okay. And, and we'll we'll sort of automatically note abstentions from uh, from of course from from Ajay and yep. Steve since they were not members yet. Mm -hmm. yep. Thank you. Very good. All right. Uh, with that done, I think we can dive into the lottery report. Uh, our first uh, report is financial. So hand it over to our CFL, Paul Granato. Hi, Paul. Thank you, Chairman Chemos uh, Good afternoon, board members, CLC staff, PCP, and other guests. I am Paul Granato. I'm the Chief Financial Officer for the lottery. Our audit firm prepared a required communication for the board of directors that was emailed yesterday. Please review that short communication and take note of our principal contact at CLA, Vanessa Versito. Her email and phone number are included in the letter and you're encouraged to contact her with any questions or concerns. We are currently undergoing our annual financial statement audit and expect that we will have audited financial statements for the next regularly scheduled board meeting. With that being said, I'm happy to report on our performance for fiscal year 21. As some of you may have heard from other committee meetings, fiscal 21 was a record-breaking year in every regard. Total sales were 1.5 billion, up 14%, 190 million from prior year end, and over 175 million, or 13% ahead of budget projections. Sales were up over the prior year in each category of gain, except for one, Lotto. Lotto sales were lower on a comparative basis, and this was due to the third largest jackpot, Lotto jackpot, which produced sales at a 50% higher than normal sales volume in the year prior. All other games exceeded uh, prior year sales volumes. Next slide. Thank you. Cost of sales includes prizes, commissions, gaming vendor expenditures, and production and marketing expenses. Our cost of sales rose commensurately with the increase in sales. Prize expense is the largest component and accounted for 930 million of the total cost of sales. That's 89% of that $1 billion number there. Prize expense was 62.1% of sales revenue compared to a budgeted number of 62.8%. And on a positive note, our total unclaimed prizes for the year were 14.9 million. Next slide. Our gross profit before operating expenses was $451 million. and our operating expenses were well controlled. Even though we significantly raised income, we held expenses in check. Operating expenses were 31 million and were lower than the prior year by 600,000 or 2%. And of course, our profits are all returned to the general fund. This fiscal year, we returned an incredible 418 million in profits back to the general fund. While it is certainly wonderful to report on these impressive numbers, 2021 is over and we start anew. So let's take a quick look at the start of fiscal 22. Sales continue to be very robust for the Connecticut lottery. Total sales for July were 121.7 million compared to 123.9 million in the prior year. Not surprisingly and not unexpected, sales were down a little, over 2 million or 1.7%. Kino sales in particular continue to be very strong. And in the middle of July, Lucky for Life, which was previously drawn twice a week, became a daily drawing. Connecticut experienced a nice increase in sales in those two games. And just as an additional comparison, in fiscal year 20, the results from two years ago, our, our sales revenue was 106 million. So you can see that very large lift from two years ago, and we've maintained and kept that position at 120 million. Price expense, again, is the biggest component of cost of sales. 
and it accounted for 74 million of the cost of sales or 88%. And prize expense was 60.8% of sales revenue compared to the prior year of 59.5% and a budgeted amount of 62.7%. Operating expenses. Total operating expenses were 2.2 million with 82% of that total representing salaries and wages. Operating expenses again remained well controlled and they were lower than both prior year and budget. We transferred 35.2 million to the general fund during the month, exceeding budget expectations by 4.9 million, but we were down compared to prior year. So once again, in the prior year, we returned 418 million to the general fund. That comes out to $1,145,000 per day in profits. In July alone this year, we returned 35.2 million to the general fund, and that's $1,135,000 a day. We are off to a great start to fiscal 22. And that completes my report. I will open it to any questions from the board. Thank you very much, Paul. Any questions? Great, I will not complain about lack of questions for the most part today, unless there's something urgent given how much we have going on. Um, so that was terrific, obviously an incredible performance in the last fiscal year um, for lottery. Paul, thanks very much. Next up is uh, Pete Donahue with marketing. Good afternoon, Pete Donahue, Senior Director of Marketing for the Lottery. Good afternoon, Chairman Civil Care and members of the board. Today, I'm just going to quickly cover a couple topics. I'm going to discuss the sales performance on a few games to elaborate on some of the numbers that Paul shared with us. I'll also share a few promotions, marketing tactics, and provide an update on our 50th anniversary products and plan. So looking at sales for all games and how they compare to last year in budget, as Paul mentioned, and as you know, we had record-breaking sales last year. And while we are trailing that pace slightly, I'm happy to report that we are not only very class, close to last year, we are ahead of budget. Taking a look at on the instant side, uh, FY22 is also very close to uh, last year. Of course, it's early, but we have a great start. And again, very close to an incredible last year and ahead of budget. I like to show this breakdown of instant games by price point just to show any movements. Um, pretty steady across the board. The increase in the 30 helps offset some of the minor declines and other price points. But my team constantly is monitoring this to make sure that we can adjust to anything, uh, any adjustments that are necessary. As Paul mentioned, and as you know, Kino continues to show a very strong sales pattern in Connecticut. Um, past week, this past week was the 13th highest of uh, 276 consecutive weeks of sales. Sales are up 21% compared to last year and up 39% to the same six weeks in 2020. As you know, Lucky for Life transitioned from two days a week to seven days a week on July 19th, and we have had um, some very favorable sales. Through the first three weeks as a daily game, sales for the new draw game, new draw days, are up 184% versus the average of the previous four weeks. And sales on the original draw dates, Monday and Thursday, are also up 15%. Overall sales are up 75%, which amounts to over $700,000. So all good news, uh, lucky for life with the change. We are in the home stretch of what we are calling the Lucky for Life 365 promotion. This promotion was designed to reinforce the message that Lucky for Life is now drawn every day, and it highlights the game's top prize, which coincidentally was just won in Massachusetts this week. We also shifted our marketing message slightly when referring to the top prize. We feel that 365,000 a year resonates more with our consumers than $1,000 a day. On this promotion, every lottery draw game purchase across all games is eligible to win a free Lucky for Life $2 quick pick. And so far uh, to date, we've awarded uh, probably about 28,000 free tickets by now. It was 27 and change right before this meeting started. Another promotion that we've created focuses on the reboot of the Connecticut Lottery Classic. 
we are bringing Scavenger Hunt back as a special edition game. Scavenger Hunt was very popular many years ago, so we decided that a little nostalgia would be great heading into our 50 year anniversary. In fact, we're actually launching it off cycle on a Thursday with the hashtag of a throwback Thursday. Um, it should accomplish a, a bunch of different goals, awareness, trial, and drive traffic into retail. We're actually going to um, ask players to go into their favorite retailer, and it's going to be very much like a traditional scavenger hunt. They're going to look for that piece of POS, snap a picture, um, and post it with the name of that retailer, and hopefully we will generate a lot of awareness for scavenger hunt being back out there. Again, drive traffic to retail and uh, award some prizes along the way. And to close it out, lots happening behind the scenes, preparing for our 50th anniversary next year. We have our product plan set. You can see uh, our beautifully designed uh, instant ticket, uh, one, two, five, and a 10 family. Uh, we think they look absolutely fantastic. And we'll also have a $20 fast play ticket out there with a $200,000 top prize. We are actually, we're also planning our final event um, in October of 2022. And it will be held at the Hartford uh, Healthcare Amphitheater in Bridgeport. So we're really looking forward to a great 2020 to follow up on a great 2021. Uh, if there are no other questions, we can uh, move forward. Thank you, Pete. Any questions on marketing? Questions. All right, great. We can. Move on to Manny. I'm sorry, did you have something? No, I just said no questions. Sorry, okay. Jeremy. No problem. Thanks. Uh, great. Let's move on to uh, the president's report. Greg Smith. So I want to make sure I start uh, uh, by pointing out uh, that there will be a few things about sports uh, discussed uh, today. And so there's a little bit of a visual sports theme here for the update <laughs> uh, uh, and more to come. Um, so uh, uh, just covering a few thoughts on each of these topics uh, uh, for you quickly. Um, uh, regarding our games, um, we have some recent or upcoming changes uh, to games. Uh, certainly Paul and uh, Pete uh, uh, mentioned the Lucky for Life went to daily drawing. Uh, the Lucky for Life game originated in Connecticut, so it's kind of near and dear to our hearts. Um, it's, a, it's been great to get to this daily drawing uh, position. And it's uh, also good to note that all the member states are uh, experiencing uh, significant sales increases uh, since we went to daily drawings. And Connecticut is among the leaders of those with those large increases. Um, the other uh, important uh, point for this is that uh, the transition of the drawing, uh, which used to be held in Connecticut and is now performed by the Multi-State Lottery Association, um, in Iowa, uh, done for the game group now. Uh, it's the first time that a, uh, what I'll call a national game, uh, Lucky for Life, is sold in 23 states. Uh, that drawing is performed using a digital drawing system as opposed to a ball machine. So this is the first national game group to uh, take that step and we've had uh, good success uh, from the beginning of the daily drawings using that machine. Uh, moving on to Powerball, uh, Powerball, uh, in a week and a half is going to be adding a third drawing uh, to its weekly drawings. So it'll now be drawn on Monday in addition to Wednesday and Saturday. Um, and that begins on Monday, August 23rd. We have projected a small sales increase um, uh, for this additional drawing. Uh, this game a bit different than Lucky for Life uh, in that Lucky for Life has a constant same value top prize where the Powerball game uh, has a growing uh, uh, jackpot prize. And so uh, we'll, we'll be interested in seeing how players respond to the additional third day of drawing. And then last of all, Fast Play. Uh, Fast Play has just experienced its one year anniversary in Connecticut, uh, having launched last July. Um, our first year of sales, we achieved over 35 million in annual sales. And the game was very well received by our consumer base. So um, it, it's, uh, Good for us to be able to announce that uh, this fall we'll be adding more games uh, to the fast play category and I'd look for a, a continuing growth in sales in that game um, from our consumers. Uh, next on to operations, uh, just wanting to make sure the board uh, knows that so the CLC staff uh, has been back to work 
um, uh, full time using a variety of in office and telework schedules. So everybody's back doing their jobs, um, all kind of, uh, I don't want to call it post pandemic, but we've adjusted back uh, to, to our normal scale um, uh, a few months ago. Um, we do continue to do enhanced cleaning and we do continue to limit the size of our gatherings, uh, so, you know, different than what we would do pre pandemic, where we would just get together and, and this meeting would all be held in the boardroom with public attending. So we've, we still have a few restrictions or modifications in place. And then we continue to monitor the news uh, and the guidance on state testing results to see if there are any adjustments we need to take into consideration and then we'll implement them. Uh, we're well rehearsed on how to uh, adjust our operations and we'll be standing ready to make any adjustments if we need to. Um, uh, one quick comment on our regulator, our Department of Consumer Protection, uh, just letting the board know, uh, CLC began preparing quarterly compliance reports that we send in to uh, uh, the commissioner and the director of gaming each quarter. Uh, we have just completed our uh, quarterly report for the April to June period and submitted that last week. So uh, we continue to uh, call out either notable or, uh, compliance matters or uh, topics that we want to emphasize relative to complying with our regulations. And, and then last of all, uh, uh, just a comment for you on sales trends for current and for new board members. Um, it, CLC sales uh, each quarter follow a trend year after year, and that being our sales are the weakest in quarter one. They grow for second quarter, they grow even more for third quarter, and you get to their highest uh, success level in the fourth quarter. And, and that's very that's nice calendar. to see as we go through the year. Um, one adjustment that's interesting for us is when we transition from the fourth quarter to the first quarter, it almost feels a little bit like a letdown. Um, but our sales are continuing to be very strong. We, we do continue to beat uh, prior year, particularly pre-pandemic year sales. And I think Paul mentioned that we're up about 15% over, this, over July of 2019. So we are continuing to do well, even though we've given a little bit back of the weekly sales that we are experiencing in May and June. Uh, so we're still in a really good place and uh, like to see where we are. And then finally, um, uh, before we get too far into the meeting, I want to make sure I can uh, uh, say a, a welcome to a new uh, employee uh, to the Connecticut Lottery Corporation, uh, someone who returned back to us. His name's Andrew Walter. He used to be one of our attorneys and uh, stepped away for a little while. And we have just hired him back as our director of legal and business affairs for the sports betting division. So before we get uh, uh, too far into those discussions, I just wanted to say welcome back to Andrew. and. Uh, we look forward to your contributions with us. Thank you, Greg. I'm happy to be back and uh, I'm really excited about the next few months and years. Yeah, keep showing up, my friend. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Great, thanks, Greg. Andrew, welcome back. Any, um, any questions from the board? All right. Hearing none, we will move on. Thank you very much, Greg, to committee reports. And again, if folks could um, keep this to the highlights, uh, given our, our uh, agenda today, that would be great. Uh, we'll start with the audit committee, Mr. Meehan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I will be brief. So um, we met on July 27th. Uh, we discussed several items, uh, the first of which is the audit committee's areas of cognizance. We went through that and any areas where we might recommend specific amendments if needed. Uh, we have no recommendations at this time, but the conversation remains ongoing. Uh, we received a quarterly update on liquidated damages and service level assessments uh, to the gaming system vendor. They continue to remain elevated. Um, however, there are several initiatives in place that should see this decrease over time. That's something we'll, we'll certainly keep an eye on. Uh, we were provided with an update uh, regarding new regulations, including the fact that our rules of operation and procedures were submitted to DCP on uh, July 12th. And after receiving feedback from DCP, we'll be bringing those to the full board for review and approval. Uh, and then in executive session, we discussed uh, the gaming system procurement draft timeline, an update on uh, lucky for life prize liability and any pending claims and litigation. Um, 
hopefully that was fast enough, Rob, but uh, that completes my report, unless there are any questions. Yeah. Any questions for Andrew? Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Next up is uh, the executive committee. That is me. Uh, the executive committee had a joint meeting with the finance committee on July 8th. Um, we got an update on sales and general fund transfers, uh, a discussion about uh, the financial auditor agreement. Uh, and then in executive session, we discussed uh, real estate and potential new office space for lottery as we go into sports betting um, and, and other things. Uh, we talked about the uh, procurement process, both for uh, sports betting and also potentially down the road for iLottery and had a, an executive discussion uh, uh, about pending claims and litigation, civil suits. Um, and that was it. Any questions? All right, uh, next up is finance. I can take that if you'd like. Greg, yeah. Yeah, so uh, uh, reporting uh, for Ms. Maroney, um, that finance committee meeting, which was combined with the executive committee meeting, uh, its its sole purpose for finance committee was to uh, be able to bring forward the recommendation of the continued use of our financial auditor and also an extending their agreement and also recognizing that they were taken over uh, by another firm, uh, Bloom Shapiro taken over by Clifton Larson Allen uh, and that they assumed our existing agreement that we have with Bloom Shapiro under all the same terms and conditions. And so that committee met and made that recommendation for the full board's approval, which also took place. Very good, yeah. thank you, Greg. Yep, appreciate it. Um, next up is personnel, Mr. Blanchett. Good morning. Uh, this morning, the personnel committee met and decided to review the salary scales for managers as they compare the sales scales for the state managers and the union contract changes that happened over the last seven or eight years. We will report to the executive committee whatever our findings turn out to be. Also, we'll, stay, we'll study the uh, compensation package for the president considering the rapid changing demands imposed on him with the transition to online lottery, sports betting, and the real estate challenges that we face in the very near future. We'll also make some recommendations to the executive committee uh, probably within a month. That's it. All right, thank you. Any questions on that? Great, and then lastly, this will be very brief. Uh, the Sports Betting Development Committee uh, met several times since our last board meeting. Um, and we will be presenting the results of those meetings, obviously, in our executive session in this board meeting. So stay tuned for that. All right. Uh, so with that, unless there are any questions about committee reports, we're now going to go into executive session. Again, a reminder for anyone who, who has tuned in or dialed in for uh, information about our sports betting uh, procurement result. We will have a press conference uh, starting at 2 p.m. Eastern to announce the uh, company that's been selected as our sports betting vendor. Um, and so you can tune back in for that. Then um, there is a, a, it's a press conference. Uh, Tara Chose, our head of communications, can be contacted with uh, any information about how to uh, access that meeting. It also will be on the Connecticut Lottery YouTube channel, so you can access it there. And a press release will be going out uh, shortly after that commences to also announce the the partner so um, that's when that will be announced but right now we're going into executive session to uh, discuss that and some other matters for the board can i get a motion for executive session so move my chat and until a second all those in favor aye 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 aye, aye. any any opposed abstentions all right, great. So we'll go into executive session. Anne Marie, if you could uh, remove the public line, that would be great. Uh, is Anne Marie there? Oh, there we go. Okay, um, this is Rob Simulcare, Chairman of the Board of the Connecticut Lottery. We've just left executive session. 
Um, there were no uh, votes taken in executive session, but we're now going to have uh, votes on uh, two items that were discussed in executive session. Um, the first is a resolution related to um, sports betting. And so I will um, read that resolution uh, right now. Um, resolved that after review and due consideration and upon the recommendation of the Connecticut Lottery Corporation's Sports Betting Development Committee, the Connecticut Lottery's Corporation's Board of Directors hereby approves the terms of the short form agreement with sports betting proposer number four and authorizes the Connecticut Lottery President to sign the short form agreement. Upon completion of the full agreement, the Sports Betting Development Committee and the Connecticut Lottery President shall present the primary features of the agreement to the Connecticut Lottery Board prior to signing the full agreement. I will invite one of the sports betting committee members if they would like to uh, move to approve this motion. So move. Manny Langella, second. And Manny Langella with the second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? But the resolution is approved. Congratulations, everyone. Um, and again, for those tuning in for news, uh, we'll have a press conference at uh, the top of the hour to announce the name of the company that we just referred to as proposer number four. Secondly, um, our next resolution uh, also relates to sports betting. Um, and I'll read that one as well. Um, Public Act 2123 authorizes sports betting in the state of Connecticut, including for the Connecticut Lottery Corporation to operate retail sports betting in 15 locations and allows Connecticut Lottery to partner with Sport Tech for retail sports betting at their paramutual facilities. Connecticut Lottery Corporation recognizes the opportunity and value of beginning its retail sports betting at numerous Sport Tech facilities and is developing a strategy that is beneficial to the state by accentuating Connecticut Lottery's retail strength. In recognition of the statutory authorization and the decision to enter into an agreement for multiple locations with SportTech, the Connecticut Lottery Corporation's Sports Betting Development Committee and the Connecticut Lottery President are requesting board approval for a short form agreement with SportTech. And so the resolution reads, resolved after review and due consideration and upon the recommendation of the Connecticut Lottery Corporation's Sports Betting Development Committee, the Connecticut Lottery's Corp Corporation's Board of Directors hereby approves the terms of the short form agreement with SportTech and authorizes the Connecticut Lottery President to sign the short form agreement. Do we have a motion to approve that resolution? Andrew Meehan, so moved. Manny Langella, second. second. Manny Langella with the second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, the motion carries unanimously. Congratulations as well on that. Um, going back to the board agenda, um, that is it for our new business. And so unless there are any other matters that board members would like to raise, we will adjourn. Our next scheduled meeting is Thursday, October the 14th at 12 noon. And again, we'll have a press conference commencing at two o'clock Eastern in 12 minutes from now to announce our sports betting um, partner. Anything else from board members? No, thank you for all the hard work. Thank you very much. Congratulations to everyone. Yeah. Um, hope to see you on the Zoom line for our announcement. And uh, with that, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. We'll move. Will Benchette and Peg. 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 Peg with the second. We'll call that a second. All those in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Thanks, everyone. See you later. Thank you. See you later. See you soon. See you.